we're from Gitcoin. Um, we help incentivize open source software. And our focus is really around, right now, a uh, sort of bounty platform, uh, which allows you to take GitHub issues and basically um, put those onto our platform directly, um, incentivize those with any ERC-20 token. Despite the name, we do not have a coin or token. Uh, that is a common misconception from people that do not know the product. Um, and yeah, we actually launched a post recently describing why we won't have one anytime in the foreseeable future. Um, so if we just go to the next slide, um, my name is Scott. Um, I lead sort of technical evangelism. So basically, I just get to go talk to developers all day, which is great. Um, I used to do a lot of analytics work and development myself. Um, and now I uh, guess like I, I mostly talk to people. Um, and Mark? Hello. Uh, I'm Mark Beacom. Um, I'm a uh, lead dev at Gitcoin. Uh, primarily handle backend and DevOps related, uh, related work for the platform. So we want to start by talking briefly about the ecosystem. Basically, this can be sort of like your typical RPG map, which, um, if you're like me, is my reference point for all things in life. Um, this is effectively how we see ourselves in the ecosystem. There's sort of this intersection of open source money and open source software. And I think that we sort of saw this as a good opportunity to actually combine the two and use it as a way to align incentives between developers and between the projects uh, that they work on, especially in the open source ecosystem. So this is just sort of our brief view of Web3. You know, there's a lot of different features here that I think we all understand Ethereum to be promoting and that we want to take advantage of in our platform. In our platform. Basically, basically, the most important one is just a transparent and open network. And historically, you know, we haven't really had any kind of open source money. We haven't had a way to ensure that jobs have an impact, that you have actually good compensation, and that you can easily get alignment between your values and between the money that you're actually receiving. And so we really just wanted to um, kind of explain what we think the future looks like in that context. Um, functionally, like historically, everything was proprietary. You sort of had like even the hardware layer proprietary. And then in the 1980s, we had open hardware. And now you know, we, we pretty much, I guess, in the Web 2.0 era, have sort of open internet and open protocols at that level. And I think really what we're seeing with blockchain, and in particular Ethereum, is the data layer becoming completely open as well. Um, so in the context of open money, that really, what we really mean is, like, for us, the fact that everything is becoming open source means that it's extremely important that we are able to support that through Web3. Um, to us, they go hand in hand. So as I mentioned, effectively what we're trying to solve is this lack of alignment between open source and um, actual VC or venture capital. So in history, you had problems like, for example, with OpenSSL, where there was no real way to get any payment for developing something that's absolutely critical for the functioning of the entire internet. So OpenSSL, um, for those not familiar, um, unfortunately is also the cause of something called Heartbleed, or was the cause. And that was largely just because there was no real easy way for those developers to get paid for their time in open source. So ultimately, as we see it, what we want to end up doing is making it easier for those developers to get paid for work that's actually directly benefiting their community. And the way that we do that right now, as I mentioned, is effectively through a bounty platform. So really, you know, I, I think the word bounty is not a great word, but this is just a starting point for us to create a more general platform that allows open source developers to get paid by the projects that they're actually working for in a way that actually aligns with their values. So for example, we have partnerships with uh, MakerDAO, where projects get paid in DAI. We have partnerships with uh, Market Protocol, where projects will get paid in their tokens once they're uh, launched. We have a uh, partnership with Augur as well. And these projects can pay in pretty much any ERC-20 token, but providing is a way for complete alignment between the product and the actual um, and, and the contributor. So one of the major questions we get asked quite often is what you know, is the benefit of a bounty if most of the top open source contributors are actually 
contributing mostly due to their own intrinsic motivations. And I think this is sort of a, a misconception that really there's only one way for open source developers to be motivated. Ultimately, we want there to be um, a pretty good distinction between these, uh, these sorts of these concepts. Basically, even if you do something intrinsically, you, you can't actually continue doing it unless you are able to eat. Like, that's kind of a fundamental truth in life. And so we want people that are intrinsically motivated to still get rewards for the work that they're doing out of the goodness of their hearts. And then alternatively, there are lots of people that would contribute to open source that just don't have the time or energy to do it and would love to be able to if they could just get some small piece of compensation for it. So we're trying to really incentivize both the kind of old school open source developers who understand that there's value there and want to contribute. And then we're also trying to incentivize new developers who aren't really familiar with the open source ecosystem. So this kind of goes back into, and I'll go through this briefly because we actually don't have a ton of time here, um, self-determination theory, which is basically talking about like, what causes people to be intrinsically motivated. And really, that comes down to three core concepts competence, autonomy, and relatedness. So we're really focusing on autonomy. We want to give developers the freedom to focus on tasks that are relevant to them and to really do that in the context of whether that's a full-time job for them, whether that's a part-time job for them, they should be able to choose the amount of time they're spending on those tasks, and they should be able to fit that into their existing workflow. So I think the one thing we're most proud of is we're a working mainnet application and have been a working mainnet application for uh, just about eight months now. And we have about 150,000 in bounties that have been paid out through the platform. And we're looking to increase that quite substantially uh, over the next few months. So Mark is going to give us a quick demo of that right now. Um, we just recorded a video for succinctness, um, but we can walk you through some of the other features uh, if we have time. OK, so to start out, um, I went ahead and uh, I recorded a video uh, starting out with uh, posting, posting a bounty to upload a photo from DAPCON. Okay? So you can actually go on GetCoinCo slash DAPCON on, uh, oh, looks like the, oh. <laughs> technical difficulties <laughs> with a video. Maybe we should have done a demo. If we have an internet access, we can just go to the main site, actually. Yeah. That might be easier in this case. <laughs> Clearly, I was. Uh... That's right. Sorry, I'm not, not into video editing, so. OK, so I posted, I posted an issue yesterday afternoon. Um, you can actually check it out at gitcoinco slash dapcon on GitHub. Um, there's only one issue in this repository. And more or less, it was just to. As you can see, it's all about growing open source. So we have two sides, we have two sides to our market, um, whereas there's the funder and the contributor. If you're a funder, we walk you through posting a bounty working with the Gitcoiner, and growing your project. On the contributor end, we provide you with a platform that, you can, that you'll be able to see all issues posted throughout our, uh, throughout our service. You'll be able to find, thing, uh, find issues that match your skills, at, as well as contributing to fairly prominent projects in the space, as well as getting paid. So. We'll move into the issue explorer. It seems that this is running fairly slow. I suppose it's not a live demo without problems, right? <laughs> OK, as you can see here, um, by default, it sorts by mainnet bounties that are open and currently in an open state. And pretty much what that means is, is that fellow contributors haven't actually started work on, or expressed interest on that bounty yet. Wow. 
So to move back to the initial bounty that I posted for this event, as you can see here, there is a call to action to start work. Once you start work on, on the issue, you'll be able to submit your, submit your um, image to, directly to the GitHub issue. And well, your peers will judge it accordingly. Um, so let's say let's say you want to you're an open source uh, repository owner and you'd like to get started by opening an issue or in raising a bounty. It's fairly simple. We're fairly tightly coupled at this point to GitHub, um, so any any direct uh, any direct GitHub issue will do. Typically, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, perfect. <laughs> okay, so. So, really, the goal of the funder flow, by the way, is like we want to make it as seamless as possible to actually integrate GitHub to, and like eventually other platforms as well, to our platform. And we want that to really be a process that allows you to pretty much just feed in as much information as possible from GitHub, from your existing workflow, into this platform in order to enable more open source contributors to be actually involved in your project. I think that's actually one of the core benefits of sort of what we're doing. It's not, a lot of people think that, you know, if you're posting an issue, it has to be something that you're not able to get done internally, that you have challenges with. Um, I think that's sort of the wrong way to think of it. Often what you're trying to do is get more people working on your project get more people involved in your open source community in order to sort of, one, fulfill the ethos of open source in the first place, but also just so that those people can eventually become core contributors who are solving harder issues, and eventually so that those people can become maintainers of the project itself. So there's sort of a flow from user to contributor to maintainer, and I think that's a really important flow for any of these open source platforms um, to be thinking about. Okay, so, so as you can see, as of right now, we've had roughly $150,000 USD uh, circulating throughout the platform to date. As of uh, as of July, uh, as of July, we have roughly a 90% bounty completion rate for all bounties across the platform. Um, also, you can, uh, if you were to go look at this later on, you can actually filter this down by specific stack or language. Uh, the typical turnaround time um, for a bounty is, is typically six days, but you can set any deadline you'd like on, a, on d during the funding process. Um, so far, we've had roughly 14 people receive full-time offers just by using our platform. Uh, that includes organizations such as uh, MetaMask, Uport, uh, the Ethereum Foundation. I don't think I missed any. Uh, the, the hourly rate is roughly anywhere from $5 an hour to $73 an hour. And typically, it takes about 10 hours for your bounty to be picked up by a contributor. So let's just quickly run back into the, um, into the actual presentation. Um, one thing we wanted to go over with you guys, just in sort of the interest of being fully transparent with our architecture, which is entirely open source. Um, basically, Mark, if you want to explain that, give the 30 second <laughs> overview, okay. Okay. and then we can. OK, so um, for the most part, Gitcoin is actually a, a Django web ap application um, that communicates using Web3 Pi and Web3 JS. Um, our, sta our, our centralized stack uh, resides in, on AWS. We utilize CloudFront as our CDN. Um, beyond that, we, we utilize the you know, Elastic Load Balancers. Um, we, we have a self-scaling, self-healing uh, Kubernetes cluster to handle our application, uh, as well as our geth nodes that we're running. <coughs> Um, likewise, our, our, our source of truth is on-chain and IPFS. But 
to, to, to ensure that our service uh, runs a little bit faster the way uh, a traditional contributor to GitHub would expect, we, we actually mirror that in a Postgres database, and we also use a caching layer, which is Redis, as you can see here, uh, with, a, with a standard uh, follower, uh, leader follower uh, set up for that. Okay, so uh, technical roadmap. Moving forward, um, we're always iterating on our platform. <clears throat> we're continuously iterating on our platform uh, to inc include dog fooding our own service. Uh, uh, that the vast majority of features and bug fixes that we merge merge into our repository, which is fully open source, by the way, at Gitcoin Co. slash web on GitHub. Um, we have we have a few different things uh, uh, coming up to include stack-specific landing pages, uh, reputation system for bi-directional feedback. Uh, that includes uh, contributor and funder rating systems, uh, an improved uh, funder and bounty matching system. Currently, we will match you with bounties that, uh, that have been recently opened that, uh, that target your specific uh, skill set, but we're, we're currently working on improving that as well. Um, we'll, be, we'll be launching a job board so that you can find more full-time roles in the Web3 space. Uh, as well as uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be launching an on-demand QA environment uh, platform that will allow us to, further, uh, to increase our velocity of community contributions on our platform so that as soon as you submit a pull request, it'll spin up a test environment that will be able to QA your code directly and see that it's merged faster and your bounty's paid out to you and you receive your, your incentive in a, in a quicker fashion. Um, we'll also be providing uh, more organizational management and brand awareness for, for repository owners so that you can manage members as well as uh, empower members of your organization to, to manage your bounties. And also, as you can see, community moderators so that, well, we can turn around escalated issues a little bit quicker. Yeah. So we do have a few other things, but just because of the technical issues, we are sort of out of time. So really, this is what I mentioned before. We just have this idea of maximizing freedom on bundling work. And that doesn't just involve bounties. It involves things like grants from organizations such as the ECF or from the foundation itself. It involves getting involved with um, things like dev grants, which is a project we're ramping up in order to allow for maintainers to get a monthly stipend, um, likely using EIP 948, which is a subscription model um, that you can look up um, on, you know, for Ethereum. And then we're also just really looking to focus on dog fooding. We want to make sure we're building this platform using our own platform. And so we've been posting bounties historically quite a while on our platform, and we will continue to do that with both bounties and with dev grants. Um, so thank you guys for bearing with us despite the technical difficulties, and if you have any questions, um, feel free to talk to us afterwards.